Hello, ECCL Channel greets you. We are going to talk about the differential equation. You have to be able to establish it. I'm going to offer you something that I find quite simple, which is to write the activity in two different ways. First by giving its definition. It is the number of disintegrations per unit of time. Don't forget the minus sign here. And you can also write that this activity is proportional to the number of nuclides. Indeed, if there are twice as many nuclides, the activity will be twice as great. Lambda is the decay constant. It is also the constant of proportionality in this equation. Which leads us to write delta n over delta t equals minus lambda times n. Well, there it is. We are almost there. Almost. The time intervals must be of infinitesimal magnitude. At this point, we replace the delta with lowercase d, and we get the derivative of the function. And that's why we call it a differential equation. Because we have the function and its derivative in the same equation. You must remember that a solution of this equation is n sub 0 times e to the minus lambda t. We will demonstrate this at the end of the video. If you are given this solution in the instructions, you may be asked to verify that this solution works well for the differential equation we have established. Therefore, you will differentiate here both sides. You obtain dn over dt equals minus lambda times n0 times e to the minus lambda t. And we find the differential equation. So here the secret is to differentiate. So that's the differential equation. Here is his solution. And I wanted to discuss with you a relation between the constant lambda and the half-life. So here is the expression of our function n as a function of t which was the solution of the differential equation. I replace n by n sub 0 over 2, if I replace t by the half-life. There is this correspondence still posted here. n sub 0 over 2 corresponds to t sub 1 half. At this point, I simplify by n naught, that gets rid of, and I have 1 half equals e to the minus lambda t sub 1 half. If I take the natural logarithm in both sides of the equation, it comes minus natural logarithm of 2 equals minus lambda times t sub 1 half, and I get the formula I was looking for. So here is your little card. I have displayed a slider at the bottom to modify lambda, so that you understand that lambda and half-life do not vary the same. They vary inversely. If I take a smaller decay constant, I will have a half-life which will be greater. They are inversely proportional. If I instead take a larger constant, I get a smaller half-life. I haven't said anything about the lambda unit yet. It can be seconds to minus 1, that is to say, per second. Since here we have seconds and the logarithm of 2 is a number 0 0.693, then lambda is in per second. But we can very well express lambda in per day, per week, per year. What is important is to be consistent. That is, if lambda is expressed in, per year, then the time must be expressed in years. It has to be consistent. I offer you an exercise. Here is the problem statement. You stop and try to do it. Otherwise, I will give you the solution now. It is about a wooden boat which one discovered. It's a Drakkar. 
a Viking ship. So it has not been manufactured recently, and we measure the activity of a sample of wood taken from the hull. There are 12 disintegrations per minute and per gram, whereas in the atmosphere and in living matter such as wood it is 13.6. So between the time the wood was cut and the time the activity measurement was made, the activity decreased. So, I warned you earlier, we can use an array. I purposely chose an example with A. It is not to destabilize you, on the contrary, it is so that you are comfortable. We treat subjects in the same way. So, justify the variation in activity of the wood sample over time. Then, the activity is proportional to the number n of nuclei. We wrote it earlier. So write a, as a function of t equals lambda times n as a function of t and therefore, when one decreases, the other also decreases, and moreover, in the same proportion. This is why the activity of a sample decreases. Knowing that the law of the activity decay is written. See, we give it to you. In this problem statement, you are given the decay law. Express the time as a function of the other quantities. I'm going to try a carbon dating. This is the title. We're trying to date this famous longship. I therefore suggest that you pass to the left the part which contains what I am looking for, namely the time. And taking the logarithm to get rid of the exponential here. Taking on both sides the logarithm of each member. It comes that minus lambda lambda t equals the natural logarithm of a as a function of t on a naught. Therefore t equals negative 1 on lambda times natural log of a as a function of t on a sub 0. So, I answered the question correctly since I am asked to express the duration as a function of a, as a function of t, a naught and the radioactive constant here lambda. This is what to do. The calculation of lambda. I cut in half. I am asked to calculate t. I will first calculate lambda. I'll calculate t after. Lambda, as we saw earlier, it's natural log of 2 over half life. That is to say 0 0.696 by 5730. I allow myself to leave lambda in per year. Why not? If there, I have years, my result will be in reciprocal unit. In years to the minus 1. Calculating t now. Since I have lambda. A, as a function of t is here, it's 12 disintegrations per minute. A naught equals 13.6. I don't need to change anything in the units here. Why? 12 over 13.6. So whatever the units, the ratio will always be the same as long as I am consistent. And my calculator gives me something like 1035 years. The wood that was used was cut around 948. The exercise is over. I suggest you see how to solve the differential equation. This is the differential equation. If I pass n to the other side and dt to the right, I have dn over n and there you are thinking. But why is he doing that? Well, I take the integral of both sides of this equation. We know the antiderivative of dn over n as well as that of dt. I stop at the terminals here. If you do the integral from n0 to n, that is to say from the starting point to a given situation, it has to be consistent. So it has to match here, for the durations. This is the date chosen as the origin 0 and a date t. The antiderivative of 1 over n is natural log of n, that of dt is t.
and it comes that natural log of n over n sub 0 equals minus lambda, times t. Here I am doing the opposite of what I did on time. To get rid of the logarithm, I take the exponential of both sides and it comes. n is a function of t equals n0 times z to the minus lambda t. This is how we show that this is the solution to that. That's it for this video. Thank you.